This is the Working with Sections tutorial for the CFS Cold Form Steel Design software. We're going to start by creating a composite section from the section wizard. So choose File, New Section, and let's choose Back to Back Channels. Click on Next, we'll leave it at 16 gauge. We'll choose a 6 inch section depth, a 2 inch flange, and a 3 fourths inch lip. Click on Finished. In the Section Inputs window, we have a material type. We can just leave that at grade 33. There's an option here to apply strength increase from cold work of forming. This is a provision in the AISI spec to allow an increase in the yield strength due to the forming in the corners. Let's enable that. On the Part tab, we have information about each part. Currently the right channel, and also the left channel, and if we wanted to add another part, we could just choose Part 3 and start entering its attributes. We can either use centerline dimensions or outside dimensions. These were created with outside dimensions, but we could switch to centerline dimensions and work with dimensions in that manner. There's also an option to define a part as a closed part. If we enable that, we can see that this right channel is now a closed tube. Let's uncheck that. Then on the Elements tab, we can see all of the elements are defined here. First for the right channel, and also for the left channel. So we have the length of each element. Again, this is based on outside dimensions. The angle. The radius. The web type for each element. The K coefficient, which is the plate buckling coefficient. By default, these are zero, which means that CFS will calculate the plate buckling coefficient for us based on the position of the element in the part, the stress gradient, and other factors. We can also define a hole in each element, and also a distance to the hole from the beginning of each element. One of the features in working with sections is to insert ribs into an element. So if we choose here the web element of the right channel, we can choose Edit, Insert Ribs, and we can choose a rib type in which side of the element. Let's choose the right side of that element, a rib height of 0.25 inches, a rib side of 45 degrees, a top width of 1 inch, and we'll choose one rib in that element, and click OK. We can see here that the middle element now changed to several elements. Elements 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 now make up the web. If we want to remove that rib, we can either choose Undo, which removes it, or if I click on Redo and put it back, another way is to select the rib by clicking and dragging to highlight those three elements, and then just press the Delete key, and it's smart enough to know to join those back together. And so now we have the third element as a 6-inch web element. If we want to add a hole to that web, we'll just put in a 2.5-inch hole, and that's shown here. If we want to put a 2.5 inch hole in the other channel, we will choose the left channel, and we enter 2.5 inches. And now we can see we have a hole in each of the webs. We can zoom in and out using the page up and page down keys. You can also hold the control key and scroll the mouse wheel up, which will zoom into the area the mouse is currently hovering over. If we let go of the control key, we can pan up and down in the image by scrolling the mouse wheel. And if we hold the shift key, we can pan left and right. We can also pan by holding control and using the arrow keys. And for more precise panning, we can click and hold the mouse wheel to drag the image around with the mouse. Here we can see that the hole is represented by a line at the middle of the material thickness. Here in the middle, there is a plus. This is the origin of the section, which is the reference point for the positioning of the parts relative to that origin. Now let's zoom back out, which we can do by holding the control key and scrolling the mouse wheel down, or by simply pressing the home key. Another feature here is to be able to measure various points in the cross section. To do that, we will hold the control key and click to select a point. Let's choose this outer corner. And then to choose another point, we hold the control key again and click another point. And that gives us the distance between those two points. Use control click one more time to remove the dimensions. We could do that again to measure another dimension. This shows the horizontal, vertical, 
and diagonal distance between the points. CFS also comes with four different section libraries where we can open predefined cross sections. To open these, we'll go to the File menu and choose Open. And in the CFS Files folder under Documents, we can choose one of these library files. Let's choose SSMA, which is a common library by the Steel Stud Manufacturers Association. We have several different section types. If we choose, let's say, Structural Tracks 33 KSI, then we have a whole set of sections that are pre created. So let's choose a 4 inch track with a 1.25 inch flange and a 30 mil thickness. Here's our track shown in a separate window. If we want to place this track in our section, it's just a copy and paste function. So we first select the entire part by double clicking on it. Then we choose Edit, Copy, or right click and choose Copy. Switch back to our shape and we choose Edit, or right-click, Paste Part, and we have it in our section. So if we want to put this on top of the back-to-back -to -back C, the first thing we need to do is rotate this. We go to the Edit menu and choose Rotate Part. We want to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, so this would be negative 90. And now we need to position this up at the top. To do that, we go to the Part tab, and the track is the currently selected part. We choose the Y dimension to the top edge, and the dimension we want to use would be half of this height, which is 3 inches, plus the material thickness, which is shown here. So this would be 3.0312. Press Enter, and now the track is on the top of this section. Now we can save our composite section. We choose File, Save As, we'll name it Composite, and choose Save. We can also save this as a DXF file for use in a CAD system. We choose File, Save As, change the file type to DXF, we'll leave the name as Composite, and choose Save. CFS can also import from a DXF. First, let's see the DXF file that we just saved. I'm going to use TrueView to look at mine. When we open composite.dxf, we can see here that the entire section is shown. To import a DXF, we have a help topic that specifically addresses this. We'll go into Index, search for DXF, choose Import DXF, and here we have some information about how to do this. Basically, we have to create each part of a section as a separate polyline. Let's look at an example. I'm going to open a DXF file, and here we have several shapes that are all continuous polylines. We can see here that we have a polyline that's a uniform thickness, continuous, and it starts with a straight segment, then an arc, then a straight segment, and then an arc, and so forth. We can also have closed shapes, which are represented by closed polylines. Here's another one. And here's another example of an open shape. Keep in mind that the width of the polyline defines the thickness of the part. Here's an example of a polyline that would not be imported by CFS. That's because it does not have a uniform thickness and also does not have an arc section between those straight line segments. Also, all arcs in the polyline must be less than 180 degrees. To import a part with an arc of exactly 180 degrees, you would have to divide the 180 degree arc into a 90 degree arc segment, then a straight line segment with a length near zero, and then another 90 degree arc segment. So to open this in CFS, we choose File, Import DXF, and then we'll choose Example 1 and choose Open. We get a notice that there were four parts imported. The material properties still need to be set, and you may want to enter overrides for the torsional properties J and CW. And here's that file opened in CFS. So that concludes working with sections. Thank you.